What's up, YouTube? Bogey Primer here. Prime and ready to deliver you our week three matchup here in the totally average league, the TAL. This week we are taking on Coach Pi, P.I. Pi, and the Dallas Mar Shadows, and he has a very, very threatening team. Uh, he has Mega Manectric and Landers Therian, a dual Intimidate core right there, which is really scary enough as it is. Lando as one of his Z users. He has Starmie, Klefki, Shaman, Blaziken, Lanoon, Toxapex, Miss Magius as his Super Z user, Haxorus as another Z user, and then Zoruark. So, really, really threatening squad. Uh, really, really scary, really hard to deal with. Um, really not looking forward to dealing with it, um, but hopefully we can pull out the dub here in this matchup. Uh, obviously, things that stand out as scary is obviously Belly Drum Lanoon, uh, is hugely threatening. Toxapex, if played right, is a monster. Zoroark, if he can play it well, if he brings it, uh, can be a real big annoyance for our team because obviously it hides itself with that illusion ability and can be a massive threat to deal with. It can hit really, really hard. On either side so hopefully we don't have to worry about that too too much um, Lando plus Mega Manectric. Mega Manectric first of all outspeeding my whole team that's kind of annoying as it is but then I go with the dual Intimidate core with Landorus and Mega Manectric while neither one is particularly bulky those Intimidates really rack up really fast so that can be a huge huge issue for us there not really looking forward to trying to break through all of that shit um, but yeah. Outside of that, there's nothing too, too spectacular. The Klefki can be annoying. I'm hoping he doesn't bring a dual screens Klefki, because that could be super agitating. I mean, I could probably beat it in the long run, but, like, I don't want to have to beat it. I don't have to. Um, yeah, it's just going to be an annoying game, but I think we can pull out the W if we play well enough. And with our new Mons, I'm really excited to give this a shot even though we're only bringing one of them this week. But still, it's fine. The first one we're bringing is Choice Scarf Top of Coco. Um, the reason we're bringing Choice Scarf is because it outspeeds his entire fucking team, uh, including the the Manectric. Uh, we outspeed the Starmie. We, we speed crept the Starmie, so we're outspeeding everything. Uh, Thunderbolt will nuke majority of his team. Like, everything that doesn't resist it. Like, this nukes everything... Except the Shaman, the Haxorus, and the, um, the obvious Lando and Manectric. But we have Dazzling Gleam to hit things like the Manectric if they want to try to switch in, and Haxorus if it wants to try to switch in on us, and Shaman if it wants to try to switch in on us. We also have the HP Ice for the Shaman and HP Ice for the Landorus. Uh, we are, that's why, uh, another reason why we're Scarf, just in case he brings Scarf Lando. Uh, so that we can outspeed the Landorus and hit it with an HP Ice and make it dead. So that's really cool. Um, and then we have the U-turn there because we don't want to run Volt Switch because he does have the, the access to that ground type in Landorus as well as having a regular Manectric which could be a Lightning Rod user which could make him immune to our Volt Switches and make us have to man and lock us in while us not being able to swap. So having the U-turn is very, very important to get the chip damage on things as well. It also helps us scout sets. You know, if he brings in something with a rocky helmet, we'll be able to see that. We'll be able to see leftovers. we get in the chip on things and all, all types of important shit. So uh, that can be very, very useful for us there. Uh, hopefully this Coco will work out for us this week. Next up, we are bringing our newest team member, Natsu the Mega Charizard X. We're just bringing a straight-up wall-breaking Zard X this week. We are not going to be trying to set up any Dragon Dances because of that dual Intimidate core. Uh, if he cycles around that, like, yeah, we'll be getting speed boosts, but we'll never be getting attack boosts, and we'll never be getting any damage off, because he can just cycle through those mons, and yeah, he'll be taking some chip eventually once I decide to start attacking, but I won't be able to set up properly. So even with an Intimidate drop, uh, neither of those wants to take a Flare Blitz, neither Manectric or Lando wants to take a Flare Blitz at all. Also, having the chance to burn with that Flare Blitz could be very, very fun and handy. Um, we have the Dragon Claw. It hits things that might want to come in like the uh, like the Starmie or the Blaziken or the Toxapex. Hits that really decently hard as well as the Earthquake we also have to hit that Toxapex. Dragon Claw hits the Haxorus and everything like that. 
Uh, we're running max speed with a jolly nature because I want to test the speed tie with the shaman. Um, if it runs max speed then and we win the speed tie, then we just kill it outright, which is great. And the goal is just to break walls with this thing. Like This thing just punches holes through pretty much everything on his team. He doesn't really have a great switch into this mon. Barring Toxapex, and like Toxapex isn't even the best switch into this mod. So, um, the, the standard wall breaking set is just better overall for this team. Just, just better in general. Um, really happy to have this wall breaking set. I'm actually really looking forward to using this wall breaking set to destroy this man's team to the best of my abilities. But um, yeah, that's our Zard. Very straightforward. Nothing too spectacular here. Next up we have Free Hugs, our Ferrothorn. First week outside of rain and he's already feeling comfortable still. Uh, we're earning uh, max HP, 204 in defense with a relaxed nature. I believe the 204 in defense has to do with Lanoon. Actually, because if he runs Rock Smash, like, yeah. 204 in defense prevents a Belly Drum Lanoon using Rock Smash from 2 KOing us. I know that's a crazy calc to have, but it's something he could do. Because realistically, the only thing on my team that stops Lanoon from sweeping us is this, technically. Like, barring any other, like, items and whatnot. This is the only mod on my team that stops a Lanoon Belly Drum Sweep. So, I don't want that to happen. So, that's why I'm running this particular investment. Um... We have Gyro Ball, uh, obviously with min speed and the relaxed nature, to hit as hard as we can on anything that we can. I uh, just like to hit things. So we're going to hit things with Gyro Balls. And our gyrating balls are going to hit hard on things, which is great. Uh, we also have Knock Off to try to chip off items from things, uh, which would be really great. You know, get rid of items on things that might be switched into this, which he has quite a few things that could be switched into this, but it's fine. Uh, we have spikes. Uh, I would really like to get up spikes in this matchup. Obviously, he could spin them away with something like Starmie, or he can like defog them with either Lando or Klefki at some point or another. But if I can get him up even for a little bit and get just a little bit of chip, just a little bit of chip, some some nice chip on this some things would be great. And then we have Leech Seed. Uh, Leech Seed could be really really cool uh, if we can get a Leech Seed off on something. You know, get a little bit of extra recovery back outside of our lefties. And then, you know, swap out to something else that might be able to deal with whatever he brings in better. And then we can, um, and then we can get some recovery off of it on that mod as well after eating whatever hit we, they, they might go for. Uh, so that's really, really cool. Uh, I really, really like Ferrothorn for that reason, being able to set up those leech seeds. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this works out. I think Ferrothorn has a pretty good matchup overall in this match. I'm just going to be really careful. Like, that's the main thing. I just have to be really careful watching out for potential HP fires and, uh, or scouting for those HP fires, at least scouting for HP fire as much as I can, as well as trying to avoid... Sorry about that. My mic cut out on my last point, but I was also saying I do have to try to scout and try to find where that Zoroark is, what it's disguised as, and what it is, what it could potentially be, so that I can handle it better. Uh, and avoid those flamethrowers that could just pop out of nowhere and oh me. So, the next mod we are going to cover is going to be our secondary check to a Belly Drum Lanoon, and that is Frank. Frank R. Palisand. Frank the Palisand. Frank the Palisand. Now, Frank the Palisand is built very interestingly. First of all, we have Earth Power, Shore Up, Toxic, and Shadow Ball. Toxic to get our switch-ins, things like uh, Shaman and... Um, Maybe Miss Magius as well. Not Miss Magius, but Shaman, Zoroark, if he wants to really be dumb. Or Lando, we can toxic all those things on the switch-ins. Earth Power and Shadow Ball just for dual stab, and then shore up to keep us healthy. Max HP, 108 in defense, and 148 in spadef with Calm Nature. With Seed Berry. Now, um, realistically, if he brings Lanoon, the best possible set for him would be Belly Drum, Extreme Speed, Shadow Claw, Rock Smash. Because Rock Smash can potentially 2 KO our Ferrothorn depending on our set, which we made sure that we can't that that he can't do. Um, and then Shadow Claw would be able to break through uh, Palisand, which is the other potential mon. And then Extreme Speed just hits everything else on my team, barring Armaldo. And Armaldo's not 
that great of a check to Belly Drum. I mean, it's also a good check to Belly Drum Lanoon, but I can only bring so many checks to Belly Drum Lanoon without overstacking my team for one mon. So, uh, we bred the Cassiberry here so that if Belly Drum Lanoon gets out of hand and something bad goes wrong with Ferrothorn, uh, we have this Cassiberry to eat that up. If he brings Seed Bomb and he kills me, kudos to him, because then he's just gone ahead and won the game. Plain and simple. Because if if he brings Seed Bomb over Shadow Claw, for whatever reason, um, then he wins. Basically. Put it simply. Um, that's just the simple way to put it. Uh, there's there's no other way to put it. I, I have to preserve these things if he does bring Lanoon. I have to preserve both of these mons as best as I can. Because if I don't, then I'm fucked. Basically just gonna be fucked. Um... Yeah, but this thing can stop that. Also, with the spread that I have, this thing can never be too KO'd by Mega Manectric. This thing is an amazing switch into Mega Manectric every single time. This thing shuts down Mega Manectric from doing anything. Even HP Ice doesn't even... It's like a, a, it's a guaranteed 3 KO, and we have Shore Up to just kind of heal ourselves up after it. But, um, just good Pokemon. Really good Pokemon. Forces Mega Manectric out so that we can do all the things to his team that we want. Next up we have Straight Trippin', our Alolan Muck making an appearance this week. 248 HP, 224 defense with an impish nature, and 36 in def. The 224 with the impish nature actually allows us to live from full and earthquake from I believe Adamant Lando, uh, which is interesting enough uh, as it is. Uh, if we're not intimidated and and also, if we're not intimidated, uh, Ice Punch does it Oko. Uh, if we are intimidated, then it doesn't Oko, but it does like a really significant amount of damage. And could also potentially get the Poison Touch, uh, which is great. Uh, we also have the Assault Vest that we can take on things like the Mega Manectric, the Starmie, um, Klefki, Shaman, really, really easily. We take on a lot of these mons with minimal effort. Knock off to get rid of items on things, which is very, very important. Nothing really wants to come in and lose its item to this. Um, even Miss Magius, uh, as a Z-Mon, doesn't really come in on this Mon at all. And this thing switches into that Z-Mon particularly amazingly. Uh, we can just knock it off and just blow through it without any real issues. Poison Jab for Stab. Uh, just for Stab. Literally, like it hits nothing besides the Shaman. But it's mainly just for stab. And then we have Ice Punch and Fire Punch. Ice Punch hits the Lando. Fire Punch is there so that we can actually have something to hit the Klefki. Okay, like, like okay, kind of hard-ish. Um, we get walled by Toxpex, but that's not a big deal. I ain't trying to beat a Toxpex 1v1 with Le with Muck. I'm just trying to get rid of items. But, uh, yeah, there's that. Then we have our last mod, which is going to be Hard Body... Hard body the Reuniclus, Colbert Berry, physically defensive Reuniclus here. Uh, we're running Colbert Berry physically defensive for multiple different reasons, but mainly because I don't want to be caught off guard by the Zorwark. I'm going to have to be very careful uh, about that to keep an eye out for where the, Zyg the Zorwark is. If I can figure that out, I'm pretty okay. I feel much better about this matchup because once I figure out where the, Zyg or the Z Zorwark is, I was just, I literally just recorded my draft analysis not too long ago from WCBL. So we have Zygarde there, so obviously you can tell I'm still a little bit hyped about the Zygarde. But, um, we can, if we can detect where the Zoroark's at, we can better play around it. We can click Signal Beam wherever it's at. We can pop our Culber on it, either, whether it's special or physical, it doesn't matter. We will live the hit from the Zoroark through the Culber and bop it on the nose with a signal beam and it will not appreciate it and then at that point it's illusion will be broken and we'll be able to handle it we'll remember what hp it's at and we'll be able to better handle that mon without any real issues uh we also have psychic recover and protect uh protect is actually also to scout for, Z for zorwark because against certain mons i'm not afraid to just click protect on them because well first of all let's get burn a z move on miss magius which could be great uh, as well. Um, Protect can be used to burn a Z-move. He might want to use his Z-move to try to break through my Reuniclus. 
um, because Green Nucleus is one of my better defensive mons and has been a huge pain in a lot of people's asses so far. So you could want to do that. Uh, so I protect to block the Z moves as well, which is nice. Uh, recover to keep myself healthy and Psychic just to break the Toxpex. Psychic is literally just on the set for Toxpex. And that's it. I just need something else that can 1v1 a Toxpex pretty easily, and this mod does it very easily without any real issues, so that's that's just that. But That's going to be it for this, guys. Uh, we're going to hop into the battle right now. So uh, let's... Let's go brand new Primarinas. Yeah, boy. All right, guys, we are here for our battle. And uh, looking back on it, probably several, several days after my team builder has gone up or after my uh, team was built, looking at it many, many days later, um, I'm definitely having a what the fuck moment as in what the fuck was I thinking when I prepped this team because looking at it now none of it makes sense to me and I'm very mad at myself that I prepped as poorly as I did for this I don't know if like I've already mentally checked out of this season which I'm gonna have to get myself out of because regardless of the fact of this being like one of my you know, extra leagues just to have fun and get extra practice. I do want to do well. So, like, I don't, I'm not trying to suck. <laughs> uh, because y'all know I don't suck. That's the thing. Y'all know I don't suck. So, I'm not trying to just straight suck as bad as I am. But, I've been sucking. We figured out Rain was, we, we thought Rain was the problem. And no, it's just been me. It's just been me in these battles. I don't know why. But, um, yeah. We are, we are here against Pi and the Dallas Marshadows. And, um... You see my team up here. And you see he brought the Lando, the Shaman, the the Missy Magius, the Togspex, the Klefki, and the Haxers. Gonna be hella difficult to beat. So let's just get into it. And I'm gonna show you why I'm stupid. Alright, so he leads off his Lando as I'm gonna lead off with my Ferrothorn and he immediately gets off rocks and that's like and then I'm like, alright, no big deal, I'll just default oh, fuck. Did not bring defog on either of my mons. Did not bring defog on the top of Goko. Did not bring defog on my Charizard. So, what have we learned today? No matter the matchup, never go in without hazard removal. Ever. Now, I should have just killed the Klefki here. He's probably just going to go for another layer of spike. No, he was actually just going for the player of. Actually, I should have just killed him here as well. Instead of just spike stacking in front of him. But that was just that was just poor play. Obviously, should have killed him before he set up all three layers of spikes. But again, very poor play on my part. Looking at it now, I'm heavily regretting that. He goes for the mystical fire. Obviously, I knew that was coming, but that was, you know, I wanted to get my knockoff off and see whether he was Z or not. So, there it is. Uh, he was Colber, and that's fine. So, I have to go into Top of Coco now and look at look at that. 36% on switch in. Why did I not bring hazard removal at all? Nothing. Nothing to remove hazards. Why? Why did I do this? I swear I'm not this bad. I swear I'm actually not this bad at Pokemon. I swear I'm actually a lot better than this. I don't know what the fuck happened here. I don't know. I don't even remember when I prepped the team. <laughs> I really don't remember. I was probably drunk, to be honest. I had to be drunk, because I'm looking at this team and it's trash. 
I hate myself for this team specifically. Just this specific team build I hate. And of course, he, he makes the good play there. He sacks his Klefki to the spikes. Uh, probably could have gone for HP Ice there. Probably would have been my best play just to hit everything for better damage. Thankfully, he misses the Leech C there. They get a little bit more chip. But uh, I'm actually able to go into Zard here on that Leech Seed. And I'm just going to Mega Evolve. And I'm going to go for the Roost. Get myself back up to a semi-decent amount of HP. He's going to get the Tox Specs in for free. I go for the EQ to scout what he is. He's looking like a more physically defensive build. That's fine with me. I think I go for a Roost here because I know he's not doing that much damage to me. Yup. As he goes out to his uh, Lando. I just go for the Flare Blitz. I want to get damage on this thing. And I recognize that this game has already been lost the moment all those hazards went up. Obviously, of course I'm a regen uh, reunicless this week because why wouldn't I be? I go for the psychic, get some sick ass damage off on him. I'm just gonna go for the protect, scout what he's gonna go for. Obviously he's gonna go for a fucking shadow ball. I'm not that fucking stupid. Uh, I go out to muck here, but due to the entry hazards and everything, I'm not gonna be able to live a shadow ball plus anything else. So I'm gonna go down. I'm going to top of Coco. Obviously I'm gonna be faster than this. Because I am a Top of Coco and I'm scarfed. So I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt again, being a fool. I could have just gone for the HP Ice because I easily would have killed it there with the HP Ice. And I would have been able to probably to KO the Shaman. But again, hindsight is 30 30 because I'm dumb. Um, go out on Reuniglis. Reuniglis is going to be able to actually get a recover off because, hey, I'm fucking fat. <laughs> actually fat enough to get up for a cover. Uh, I went for the Psychic this turn just in case he decided to switch, which is nice. I got the mis caught that Miss Magius. I go for a... I I'm going to recover spam against this Entei, or not Entei, this Lando, because it uh, cannot do enough damage to me to KO me. So I'm going to go for a Psychic here, put him down into range, and then I'm going to go for some more recover spamming shenanigans. Get myself up to a decent amount of HP against the Saxers. Uh, I can just go for the Psychic there on it. Uh, I'm going to live this Dragon Claw for sure. I'm just going to go for the Psychic, drop him. But at this point, uh, the Lando can just come in. Uh, EQ me. Get me get me out of there. I got into Frank Castle for some reason who's not shiny. Yeah, I must have been fucked up or something when I built this team because I'm not. he's not shiny. Frank Castle is always shiny. So I go for the shore up on the U-turn. Uh, he's going to Giga Drain me. It's not going to do enough, and I'm going to get the Toxic off on it. And these last few turns are kind of pointless because it really doesn't get me anywhere. Like, you're going to see, like, I'm just kind of stalling at this point. Just trying to, I was trying to rack up the poison turns, and I'm just going to be able to get myself back up to full, but I do have the Leech Seed on me, and there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, Earth Power is actually a 2-hit KO on him, which is crazy. Uh, he knocked off my Kasi Berry, he gets a burn on me, which at that point, burn plus Leech Seed plus any damage they're doing every turn is just going to do a lot for me. He hit me with a bunch of Skulls, so like Water Compaction came in clutch. Uh, and by Water pa Compaction came in clutch, I mean Water Compaction didn't do jack shit. Uh, but yeah, with the burn and everything, it's going to bring me down way in range with Giga Drain, so I'm just going to drop there. That is going to be our week three of the Totally Average League. Um, yeah. I think this is the first time I've ever been 0-3 in the league in my life. We're bouncing back. It's time. You best believe we're going hard next week. Tom, we're coming for you. Get your ass ready, boy. We're coming for blood. But, until next time, I'm Pokey Primer, signing off.